Organizing photos can sometimes be quite a mess, and this is usually where many photographers get lost. Where do you store your images, how do you import them and go through them to make a, a proper and quick selection of your best shots, and how do you get complete control over your workflow and photo library. Hi everyone, what's going on? I'm Andrea, welcome back to the channel. This video is kindly sponsored by Capture One, and today we are going to take a look at some great techniques to better organize your photos and streamline your editing workflow specifically by using sessions and styles in Capture One. A quick note on photo organization, there is no one way to do the same thing, everyone's brain works differently, and what works for you to organize your images might be different than what works for me. All right. For those of you who are relatively new to Capture One, with this software, once you are ready to import your images on your computer, you have basically two main organization strategy options, the catalog or sessions. What's the difference? Uh, first of all, uh, you should understand that the main difference between the catalog and session is basically how things are stored on the hard drive. The functionality of the two systems is very similar, though both have some advantages. The catalog is just a database that uh, tracks the location of your photos and the information about them, and it lives in one location. It's by default uh, not that portable. This is definitely the setup I use uh, for my main photo archive catalog. When I travel, though, I like using sessions. Uh, they can live uh, literally anywhere, and even if uh, they are conceptually similar to the catalog, the structure is quite different. While the catalog can be represented as a single big centralized photo archive library, sessions, on the other hand, are kind of like a file browser in itself. Your edits are saved to each image's settings file instead of in a catalog. The session file itself contains almost nothing of value. Every session is a standalone entity, a sort of a mini library, if you will. I find it very convenient to use sessions when traveling, as I'm not forced to carry the large main catalog with me. So let's go ahead with showing you my import workflow with sessions in order to better understand how they work. Okay, let's start by creating a new session and importing some example images from an SD memory card. To create a new session, I'm gonna go to the main top menu, File, select New Session. Here in this window, we have different fields. The name we want to give the session, the location folder where we want to store our session, template if you want to save all these settings for future imports, and then we have a subfolder structure, capture, select, output, and trash folder. These four settings are going to stay as default, so we are not going to touch them. And lastly, the capture name, which in this case is not relevant for our purpose. However, it comes in handy if you use sessions to shoot titter. Even though I only use the folder capture and trash, let's have a brief overview of what they mean. The capture folder is where all your raw images will reside after importing from a card. The output folder contains all of your converted JPEGs, TIFFs, etc. This helps you keep track of your exported final products uh, and make it easier to share the files uh, with others after editing. The select folder is an easy way to separate selects uh, from a session. Sometimes it makes sense uh, to send the selects uh, to their own uh, location. And in the trash folder, you can move the shots you don't want to use, for uh, example, uh, those with wrong missed focus, uh, wrong composition, uh, blurred images, uh, and so on. Great, so now we will use uh, some pictures I took in Iceland that uh, I loaded onto this SD memory card, uh, and we will give uh, this new session a name. Let's say Iceland in summer, since all these images were taken in Iceland. That's the name of our master session. Now we're going to set the location, so where we want to save our session. When I travel, I always have a fast and portable external SSD hard drive with me to store and backup all my files. Once we have got a name, we can click on the icon with the three dots to select the folder on the external hard drive where we want to import our images. And from here, we can create a new folder that we call Iceland Trip. By default, the location is set on the pictures folder, but as I said, I prefer the external hard drive solution. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. Here we have our brand new session in Capture One. If we look at the side toolbar in the library model, we see the session folder with our four subfolders. Looking over the finder, you can see we have the same folder structure with Capture, Select, Output, and Trash. Up here, you can see the session name, and this is the session database. To import our images, I'm going to use the import dialog. We have got the memory card sitting in the card reader slot, so 
Straight away, you can see the import dialog has popped up and is showing us uh, the images in the card. One of the advantages of the import dialog is that you can set a custom folder on where to store your shots uh, or use tokens uh, to split them into individual subfolders. By default, your images are stored in the main session folder, but to stay more organized, I always prefer to put them in the capture folder. To do that, you need to change the destination setting on capture folder. As you can see, the sample path has been updated with the new destination folder. Great. If you click on this little arrow, you can check where the folder is in the finder. If you want to organize your storage folder in an even more sophisticated way, and this is what I like to do in my normal workflow, you can use the token feature I've just mentioned. This is basically a parameter that lets you set various criteria for managing images based on some aspect of the photo, such as the date it was taken, the camera model, the star count, and so on. So for this import, I want to use the date. It was uh, captured in order to create different folders to sort the images uh, by date. To do that, we are going to click on this icon here and select the token you want uh, into this pop-up window. Let me sort out the list to see just the date and time token. Now, I like to use the image year in uh, four digits, dash, image month, dash, and image day of month. Here below, you can see uh, the resulting date format, Capture One will use uh, to create the subfolders. Then in the naming tab, I always leave uh, image name, but if you want to rename your files, again, you can use uh, tokens. On the metadata tab, we are going to add copyright, so you can put your name here. If you like, you can apply some auto adjustments to the imported images or even apply a custom style. Later, I will show you how to use styles to save time during editing. Okay, I think we are done with the import settings and click import. Now we see this dialog box that appears every time you want to sort the images into different folders. So Capture One automatically creates a session album that shows the imported images in the different folders together. In the finder under Capture Folder, we have got the different folders and the images have been all automatically sorted by date. As you can see, Capture One has created the extra folders for the sidecar files where all the adjustments will be stored. If your images are in multiple subfolders in the capture folder and you select the capture folder, you will not see any of the images in the browser. You can only see them when you select the session album that you just created. If we imported the images into the same capture folder without sorting them by date taken, we could see them. Session albums allow me to avoid browsing down into the actual session folders. It's much easier and faster to see the individual folders, we can right-click on our Capture folder and say Show in Library. Capture One will then show me the exact path to my session, so instead of browsing the session itself, I can actually add this uh, as a favorite by right-clicking over the folder and selecting Add to Favorite. Now we have got uh, the ability to go through all these various different folders. Sweet. Here we have imported our images and can now quickly select and organize them. Now we will make a selection of the best shots. There are hundreds of ways to do this. I usually use a basic green label to select the shots I want to keep. Actually, one feature I like to enable to speed up the selection process can be found here in the top menu under Select, Select the Next When and Color Tagged. So that means when a photo gets labeled, it will automatically jump to the next shot. This doesn't make much difference if you just have a bunch of photos, but for large series uh, with hundreds of images, uh, it's a big time saver. So let's make a quick selection. Okay, any images that aren't labeled, we will not use. If you enable the None filter on the Filter tab, we can see all the images we didn't select. I usually select them all with the Command A and drag them to the Trash folder. Now, we only have the images we want to use and import into our big centralized catalog when we get back home. So this is basically my workflow to quickly organize my images when traveling. From here, if you like, you can start doing a quick edit of your images. And in this regard, I would like to show you another feature I always use in Capture One, which is uh, Styles. Styles are a saved set of adjustments that you can apply to one or more images with a single click. 
they let you quickly give your images a consistent look. You can save the adjustments or two settings you use on one image and easily apply them to any other image to speed up the post-processing. Let's have a look at how to use them and how to create your own style. You will find these styles on the Styles and Presets tool tab. Capture One offers a number of built-in styles. Up here we have the Custom Styles tab where you will find the styles you have created yourself or purchased from the Capture One store. To create a brand new style is pretty straightforward. You just need to apply to the image the adjustments you like. And once you are okay with the result, you need to click on these three dots and save custom style. And on this pop-up window, you can select which parameters to include into the new custom style and hit save. Then you have to type the name and click save. And from now on, your new style will appear on the list under custom styles. As you can see, here I have got a list of my custom styles that I created from scratch. I love styles, especially for travel photography when I want to create a consistent look and mood throughout multiple images. So let's try to apply a style to this shot. Let's see. Um, I, th I think this uh, one works pretty well with this image. Uh, this is a custom style I created specifically to be used with Fujifilm files. As you can see, I applied different adjustments to the curve profile using the classic Chrome Film Simulation, uh, some tweaks uh, on the basic exposure model, curves, uh, and so on. Of course, after we have applied the style, we can add some further adjustments like uh, increasing the exposure a tiny bit, Maybe uh, we can add more depth by dragging the black point a bit more to the right uh, and tweaking the highlights, uh, mid-tones. Uh. As you might notice, uh, to make the adjustment, I'm using the Speed Edit shortcuts. In the previous video, I discussed how to integrate the powerful Speed Edit into your workflow, so check it out. Just now, I mentioned the importance of styles in creating a unified look when working on a series of images. Let's take a look at how easy it is to do that with Capture One. Let's go into the browser and uh, select a bunch of shots that we want to, let's say, equalize in terms of look. Here we have uh, six shots, uh, all of which are displayed in the main viewer. When you apply the style or other adjustments, they will be applied to all the selected photos. So, for example, if we select this style, it will apply to all six images. But make sure that the Edit Selected function is enabled. If it's not enabled, the style will be applied only to the selected image with the white border. This workflow is uh, very helpful to see if uh, the shots match, uh, which images I still need to edit, uh, and most importantly, what direction I want to take the edit. For example, in this couple of shots, the white balance isn't quite right, so we're going to turn off the Edit Selected option, and by using the Speed Edit, we're going to adjust the temperature, the tint, uh, the exposure and contrast and so on, like that. Good, I want to give you another quick tip uh, that I think uh, is one of the greatest advantages of Capture One. The ability to apply styles uh, to individual layers. This is so powerful. You can stack different styles over each other and blend them together to create very unique looks. It's actually really simple, so let me show you how to do it. What you have to do is uh, go over the style you want, let's say this one, Right click and then select Apply to New Layer. Now, let's select a second one and same thing. Right click, Apply to New Layer. The idea is to use the first style for the foreground and the second one for the mountains in the background. So, we're going to turn off Layer 2 and on Layer 1, we are going to paint out the top half of the frame by using the Eraser Brush tool. Shortcut key M to show the mask and we start painting the top area there. Then we're going to turn on the second layer and we're going to erase the mask here on the bottom of the image, like that. Easy peasy. If you like it, you can tweak the intensity of each style layer by using the opacity slider that you find on each layer. If you want to do something more advanced, you can apply a luma range to the first layer that filters out the highlight so that the effect is applied only to the shadows. And then we do the opposite for the second layer by applying another luma range that targets only the mid-tones and highlights. This is the before and this is the after. Love it. Awesome, that's all for today. I hope you found the video useful. Again, a big thank you to Capture One for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. If you're interested in Capture One, you can try it for free. I put in the video description the link to download a free 30-day trial. And if you are really gonna purchase it, you can use my code to get a 20% off your new annual plan. 
for any questions and if you want to see more videos about Capture One, let me know in the comments section down below. If you like, I have other Capture One tutorials uh, available here on my channel. Be sure also to visit Capture One's YouTube channel, they have tons of excellent tutorials there. I have some new photography workshops coming up for next year, Tuscany, Dolomites, Iceland and Faroe Islands, so check out my website, you can find all my workshops there and email me if you are interested in anything. If you haven't already, give the like button a downstroke and subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!